Hello there. Happy New Year. And welcome to Docking Bay 327, where we build with what we know and figure out the rest. Today, we're going to look at how I made an Imperial Navigational System controller to complete part of my display on my Empire-themed wall behind me. I'll walk you through the build process to hopefully give you some ideas and inspire you on one of your projects. Let's get into it. I was admiring my crane control panels that I built recently and my eyes went to the one empty section of the display. I remembered some of the panels I purchased a while ago from the smuggler's room that still needed a home. So I took some quick measurements and decided to build an imperial navigation control box that would fill this space and incorporate those panels. I grabbed a scrap piece of quarter inch MDF laid out the panels on it and began marking my lines. Inspired by some of the props in the recent Andor series on Disney+, Plus, I decided to incorporate a 45 degree angle on the bottom section. Since I was basically building this on the fly, I would check the layout and spacing of the panels several times. Next, I used some more scraps to build the box frame for the main panel. I numbered each piece and put it all together like a puzzle. I wanted to add some small blue and white square buttons and a toggle switch to the bottom section. So I laid them out and marked their placement. Then I used my micrometer to find the right size on my step bits to drill out the holes. Thanks again to our favorite smuggler, Brian Thompson, for these awesome laser cut panels. To give it that extra Star Wars Imperial feel, I picked up a new chamfer bit for my router and ran it around the outer edge of the whole box. Since this box is from the Empire, I didn't want to do a black wash and make it too dirty, 
but I did want it to look like it had been used and worn, so I created a chipping effect using liquid latex. I also roughed up the edges with sandpaper, bringing out not only some of the black paint underneath, but the red primer below it. This gives it a multi-layer effect and sells the worn look even better. I finally broke out my airbrush kit that I've had since this past summer and was able to conquer my fear of the thing. It really is easy to use once you get the hang of it. Okay, now, I didn't film the electronics, but I basically connected all the buttons and LEDs to the LED strip, power, and then wired everything so I can turn everything on and off with the one switch. Finally, I added a couple of interesting pieces to the side and top. And then, glued these leftover magnets I ripped out of a broken elliptical machine to mount it to the wall. So before I show you the final shots and some more good close-ups and its final display area, I did want to point out there was one issue I had with the LEDs around the etched acrylic. And I remember I'd seen Bob from I Like to Make Stuff. He had a similar issue. And so I went back and I watched his video to see what he did and came up with a similar solution to fix my problem as well. So I added this foam backing because it doesn't have the reflective material that the rest of this board does. So the foam behind it fixed the glare and the reflective hotspots. So I just want to give a shout out to Bob. Oh, and be sure and subscribe and click that alert bell so you can be notified whenever I push out new content. Thanks so much for watching and here come the hero shots. Audio recording. Look at the camera. Let's try that again. Hello there. Keep my hands down. Ugh. Okay. Ooh. Now, I was fortunate enough to be able to take the last two weeks of last year off from my day job. <laughs> Golly. Today, we're going to look at the camera and not the screen. And make sure and click that alert button 
and make sure and click that oh and please oh and and oh oh and <laughs> oh and please so you get notifications when I push out your content. Oh my gosh, this should, shouldn't be this difficult. Huh?